When it came to growing up on video games, I actually wasn't the type of person to stay up all night playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2 with my friends because, one, I had no friends, and two, I actually didn't own a PS3 until early 2015, and to this day I've never owned an Xbox. So I stuck to the far superior console, the Wii, and occasionally the PS2 before my parents sold it. I have an insane amount of nostalgia for this console, in fact I remember very clearly when I first got it back in 2009. And throughout the past decade, I've had the opportunity to experience some fantastic games. Some better than others. But if there's one game that stuck out to me, it would be Spectrobe's Origins, which I'm assuming very few of the people watching this video have any idea what the fuck a Spectrobe is. So allow me to give you a brief history. In 2007, a development company named Jupiter teamed up with Disney to release a game called Spectrobes for the Nintendo DS, and a year later they released a sequel called Spectrobes Beyond the Portals. Both of which I've never played and probably won't ever be able to due to them being extremely rare nowadays. But they were both received fairly well among the people who played these games, and fans were waiting for another game that was going to be better than the other two. And what they got, I'd say, was a pretty good game. Now instead of it being released on the DS, this game was going to be the first and sadly last home console game, and instead of it being developed by Jupiter, it would be developed by Genki. And so on August 18th, 2009, Spectrobe's Origins was released to the public. Now judging from the title, this game chronologically takes place before the two DS games. Spectrobe veterans, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Alright, this history lesson is over. Let's talk about the game itself and why I think it's underrated. I won't be able to go over everything in this game because this video would be way too long, so... Ikuze! Spectrobe's Origins takes place inside of the Kaio system with a total of six planets for you to explore. Although I might be using that word generously because the planets don't feel very explorative, especially towards the end. Besides the main story, there is really no objective other than to collect all the spectrobes and weapons. The way you collect them is by sending out your child spectrobe to search for something by flicking the Wii Remote whenever you see a glowing spot in the ground. This can be a spectrobe fossil, a mineral, or a rice ball, which I'll go over later. And once you've retrieved a fossil, you can bring it back to your ship for excavation, which is a surprisingly fun process. After excavation, you awaken the Spectro by playing a song using your Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and you get to name it whatever you want as long as it's not longer than six characters. Kinda wish you could skip this option, but oh well. You can choose to have the Spectro follow you and search for items, or you can send them to the Spectro Incubator, which is this game's version of the Chow Garden from Sonic Adventure. I'm not sure how many there are, but I remember unlocking four of these, half of which I can't even find images of. This is also where the minerals come into play. There are 13 different colored minerals, with 12 of them being used to feed your spectrobe and increase their stats. To briefly go over each of them, this will increase the spectrobe's experience, these will increase a specific spectrobe stat, and I'll go over the last one in a bit. And just like Pokemon, each spectrobe has three stages of evolution. Child, Adult, and Evolved, but I'll call the last one Ancient because I think it sounds better. Child Spectros follow you around collecting whatever is underneath the glowing spots, and they help you solve specific puzzles either out in the open or in temples. Once they've reached a certain level, or you fed them an Evolved Mineral, they'll evolve into an adult, allowing them to fight alongside you. The same applies for Ancient Spectrobes, except they're bigger and have better stats than the adults. The Dark Mineral is the only one you can't keep or feed to your Spectrobes. Why is that? Because if your child spectrobe digs it up, it'll pull you into a fight with the Crawl, which are this game's enemies. Guess that's a good way to transition into talking about combat. The combat in this game is a lot like The Legend of Zelda, except you have something fighting alongside you, and a bit like Pokemon because there's an elemental wheel that impacts spectrobes, enemies, and weapons. It follows a counterclockwise direction, which is a bit odd, but easy to understand and remember. Flicking the Wii Remote 4 will send a spectrobe to attack a specific enemy, dealing loads of damage and it is so satisfying to see those critical damage icons. And flicking the Wii Remote backwards will teleport it back to you. If you don't do anything, they just occasionally attack and sometimes allow themselves to get hit. During battles, you have the option to quickly switch spectrobes by holding the Z button, which is nice and convenient so it doesn't eat up time. Switching weapons, on the other hand, is a bit more lengthy, but I guess it makes sense with the wide weapon selection and the limited buttons on the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Not only are there swords, but also axes, lances, knuckles, and blasters, each one with a specific element. And no, by the way, you don't have to go through all those menus. You can just press the minus button and you'll be able to switch weapons from there. No big deal. 
Above the Spectrobe's health meter is a meter that will allow your Spectrobe to do a special attack, sometimes draining all of an enemy's health. If you want to heal during a battle, the only way to do so is through these things called Rice Balls by pressing the 1 button. And there are four different types with each one restoring more health than the other. You'll need a shit ton of these, not just for combat, but also for bosses because... <laughs> God damn do these guys hit hard. At least that's what I remember because I barely went on the internet when I first played this game, so the idea of looking up a guide was non-existent. But some of these bosses will either have multiple elements or change elements as the battle progresses. To make things worse, the boss battles are all the same. And no, I am not bullshitting you when I say that, they are all the fucking same. And there was one boss where I thought the game would change things up, but it ended up being a fucking cutscene. I mean, at least you get a spectrobe that'll let you travel faster, that's something, right? I gotta be honest, this game has some interesting characters. The main characters, Roland and Gina, are what you'd expect from a Wii game in 2009. Rollin's the knucklehead, and Gina's the smart mouth is always telling Rollin not to be so selfish all the time. Thankfully, this happens less and less often throughout the game, which makes for better pacing, but there aren't many moments in the game where you can relate to them. Oh yeah, did you know that Rollin is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, the guy who voiced Ben 10 in Sasuke? Thought that was interesting to mention. The characters you meet along the way, I feel, are a lot more interesting. Sure, their personalities can be described with one word, just like Rollin and Gina, but what makes them interesting is that most of them are tied to a very tragic backstory involving the game's antagonist that you see bits of from the memory stored inside fossilized spectrobes that you'll see either before or after a dungeon. Kinda like Breath of the Wild, except Spectrobes Origins was released seven and a half years before that game. Speaking of the spectrobes, their character designs are fantastic and look like they can easily appeal to both kids and adults. Although I think the developers made a lot of ancient spectrobes look a bit too rugged and sharp. The main antagonist, Crux, is brilliantly thought out in my opinion. For most of the game, he's a masked man who tries to stop Roland and Gina in their tracks by summoning Giant Crawl. But after the Fifth Temple, you get an idea of the tragic event that involves Crux, and you get to see what he looks like. I won't spoil it for obvious reasons, but once you see his face, it makes his character all the more intimidating. Yeah, I know that's the only word that I could use to describe Crux, but to fully appreciate him, you have to play through the game for yourself because otherwise I'd be spoiling everything, and that's not something I want to do. I cannot talk about Spectrobe's Origins without mentioning its amazing soundtrack. If you were to ask me which video game soundtrack I think is criminally underrated, I'd immediately say this game. Hell, I'd even go as far as to say that this game's soundtrack is one of my all-time favorites. In fact, I've even used it in some of my videos. What I love about it is that it's very diverse with the music. Sometimes it can be very calm and peaceful, or it can be very ambient and suspenseful. And this can be easily applied to the battle music. Some are very orchestral and dramatic, and others are just straight up heavy and get you in the mood to kick some ass. I'll let you listen to some of my favorites. Now, sure, to anyone who has played this game knows that there are some tracks that aren't good or are just okay, but none of them are bad or annoying to listen to. Except we Terrace Field theme because you go through Inception Hill so many fucking times just to get to Haven Village, and the amount of times you have to listen to that fucking music that just doesn't fit the ambience of a bright open field at all just pushes my fucking buttons. And it doesn't help that the unused version sounds infinitely better than the final version.
Other than that one annoyance, it's fantastic. If you only like the soundtrack in this game and nothing else, I can definitely understand that since it's one of the game's strongest assets. After you beat Crux, you can choose to access the post-game which will have you go through each dungeon and defeat all the bosses again. Although this time they're a lot harder than they were before, and I remember I got as far as the Hydra boss in the Ice Temple before I just said, mm -hmm. You know what? Fuck this! I'm done! And that was the last time I ever played this game. But once you beat all the bosses, you can enter a secret portal of Menahat that'll take you to a secret boss that I never got to fight because I discovered this just recently, but he looks hard because of the amount of damage he can deal. Once you manage to beat him, you'll have to defeat a hundred crawl at the ancient ruins in Weeterra, and then you'll be awarded with the secret cutscene after you defeat Crux again, which is very disappointing, not just because it ends on a cliffhanger, but also because there wasn't a need for such a reward such as a secret cutscene because this was the final entry in the series. And this is the only special reward you get. No special weapon of sorts, a special spectrobe, nothing. Although speaking of special spectrobes, there's a card input system which you'll unlock around halfway through the game that will allow you to earn special spectrobes through constellations and weapons through circuit boards. In order to even use this, you'll need to have an input card, which I've never been able to find more information about, but nowadays they're pointless because there are a ton of websites with all the input codes. Most of these are just recolors of adult or ancient spectrobes, although I'm not sure if they had better stats than the originals. And looking back, I definitely could have used these websites if I knew they existed, but since I lost my copy three years ago during a move to a new house, I have no way of playing this game anymore. Which, I know, but I can't talk about that here, and I've avoided talking about it for a reason- Ah shit, here we go again. <laughs> Yeah, but that's it in terms of extras. With the limited amount, it makes me wish that there was another game in this series instead of just having it end at Origins. Speaking of which... No. The, the likely answer is no. I just couldn't think of a better transition card name to give my final thoughts on this game because typing conclusion is way too fucking generic. But a part of me still thinks the series will be revived in some way. It doesn't have to be another game in the series, but it could be an HD remaster on the Switch. I mean, have you seen this game in HD? Like, god damn, that just looks gorgeous. Anyways, I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that this game had loads of potential to be fantastic. And what we got is nowhere near perfect, but it's a fun experience once you get into it. And while the bosses will kick your ass a lot and make you want to throw your Wii Remote to the TV, it's the best feeling in the world once you've finally defeated those fuckers. Unfortunately, since I didn't replay this game before making this video due to me losing my copy years ago, like I said earlier, I wasn't able to re-experience the game for myself, which is something I might hate myself for because, let's be honest, I can be very retarded at times, right? In terms of things I'd change, I'd have the minerals as this game's currency instead of just using them to feed your spectrobes. I'd definitely add some shops in Weeterra that will allow you to purchase weapons, rice balls, and better armor instead of those shitty shields that barely do anything and are so forgettable they might as well not even be in the game. And I'd add more side quests with actual rewards like earning better spectrobes. The only thing I'd keep are some weapons behind property barriers because it's the only other reason you'd be playing this game unless you've collected every weapon in the game just before you've beat Crux, which is always possible. If you happen to be lucky and snatch a copy of this game, definitely give it at least one playthrough. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, then that's fine. At least you could say that you played through it. Hell, if I manage to get a copy of this game, I'll most likely play through it again because I do remember enjoying my playthrough of this game and I'd do anything to play through it again. And to everyone watching this video who has fully played through this game, let me know what you thought of it because I'm curious to hear if you liked it or hated it. But as of now, the Spectrum series has been lost to history. It had a good run, but it could have been better and maybe there would have been a fourth game. At least, that's what I'd like to imagine. Alright, dramatic shit aside, this video's over. Play Spectrum's Origins if you somehow manage to get your hands on it, and see ya.